what's next? Okay, so I say I'm a slow progressor. How do I know it's still progressing since my arms still seem to work? After I stopped walking, I still could do a few things with my legs. They gradually went away. So I know ALS hasn't given up on me. It's still working. <laughs> um, my swimming, I started going to the gym again. I've been swimming in my own pool, but that was getting, one, so expensive to heat the pool, and two, I drive an electric car. <laughs> I, 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 I'm strongly, I have strong feelings about carbon footprints and that subject matter, and I was putting, in a, putting a lot of carbon dioxide out to keep the pool going. About mid-December, I stopped doing that because it was ridiculous. Um, I looked into going back to the gym, and apparently that's the safest way to safest way to work out the gym. You're outside, so I'm swimming at the gym, and that enabled me to compare apples to apples. I can see how I was swimming before the pandemic, about nine months before, and then recently, and my swim times have gone way down. Um, I don't think that's Lung capacity, I don't, I, that still feels good. I don't think that's arm strength. If anything, I think my arms have gotten bigger because <laughs> I'm working, it's, the workout's becoming harder. Um, I think it's, I had leg strength. I had marginal leg strength before. Before, when last year when I was swimming, I could still kick my legs a little bit. Not enough for propulsion, not ALS. That's just me always with a stammer. Always had a stammer. Um, I could kick my legs a little bit, enough to like mitigate their drag effect a little bit, but not enough to help me swimming. Um, now, my legs kind of, they don't, I can't kick them at all. They follow me at an angle, so there's a lot more drag. And my whole bottom half is swaying back and forth with my strokes. And I can't, I don't have any strength in my legs or hips to counter that. So that's how I know the, the progression is still occurring. It's still, I still have a tiny bit of strength in my legs. I can't do much with them, but even when I stopped walking, I had some strength. Now I have less strength. So I do know it hasn't quit on me. And the upper body influences, I don't know. There's, I feel muscle twinges here and there. I feel cramps, but nothing that's impacted function. Um, just inconveniences and some pain to do normal things. So, like I said, can't distinguish that from collateral injuries yet. So I don't know if ALS has invaded my upper body. Anyway. But on the other side of the coin, this is an amazing time to live in. If you've got ALS, there's, um, it, and I laugh, but you, you got to hear this. I'll, I'll try to go through it quickly. This disease has been well documented for over 100 years. The first drug to actually treat ALS to, to produce a positive benefit to, to in, extend life a little bit was approved in 1995. So let's say 100 years of nothing, then 1995, there's a drug. Then around 2016, 2017, a second drug was approved. Um, these are what my doctor calls singles. They're not home runs. They kind of attack the problem, not at its root, but kind of help your body last a little longer. Um, they protect your neurons. The, the disease is attacking the neurons and your, your motor neurons, and they're atrophying or dying. And these drugs that they're offering now can protect them a little longer. So we don't even know what causes ALS yet. We, we, there's, some gen, there, there's a couple of genetic mutations have been identified that are responsible for 10% of all AL, known ALS cases. The other 90% are what they call sporadic, and that's me and a bunch of other people. Environmental issues are often cited. The military's double the national population 
the national incidents are another thing. Is what is something the military is doing or being exposed to that's making them more likely to get it. So those are environment, probably environmentally triggered. Um, but that's two drugs in 20 years. And then last year, another drug was just be, is being pushed for to skip phase three trials because it's so promising. Um, that's also another an extender. And just a month ago, um, the University of Edinburgh, I believe it was, identified a, a virus that they engineered that's, that kind of energizes your, nor, your motor neurons and re, in, in some cases restores their behavior, their original behavior. Um, they've only done this in the lab. And this is, the research is exploding and it's thanks to like all these like, you know, I've asked people who've seen these videos to give money to these causes and they've done it and thank you so much. There's your money, your money's working. So keep it up um, and who knows, my progression is slow enough, I might see a drug that can start to, to halt the disease. Nothing exists yet, There's, but that last one is very promising. It actually, the neurons that they tested on were grown in a lab to have ALS. And, or it, ALS like a like disorder where they atrophied and the treatment they gave them restored their function. And there's drugs right now being taken in the in the, the diabetic community. This is a weird overlap, but there's some type two diabetic drugs that have the same effect. They energize the mitochondria and your neurons, and these neurons that were damaged are growing again. It's fascinating and what a lucky person I would be to come down with an incurable disease on the eve of its cure. Anyway, um, those just give, you know, more reasons to be positive. I don't know. Again, I'm positive because I've been lucky and this is just another sign of luck, but you know, I still feel every day I have, I have a touch of depression about the people I've met in the group and the people I haven't met and the people who don't have access to the care I have and the, the support systems I have and my financial resources. Like I'm still employed. I'm making good money as an engineer. I can afford taking these, buying a wheelchair here or there. I, I specifically cry. Like I, I feel bad for all those people, but I specifically feel bad for like I touched upon the people like Peter and and the others I I do know who are not doing as well as I am. But I want to end. I think this is a good ending point. <laughs> this is a long video. I I didn't want to do something differently instead of showing off like my wheelchairs or my swimming. Um, I hope you know. This has explained a lot. Like I wanted to share like what's going on with me in case you're, you know me and you didn't want to ask. Um, and I also wanted to share my own feelings and, and apologize if those other videos sounded like I was bragging. Like, I'm, look, look at me, I'm, I figured out ALS. I haven't figured out crap. <laughs> um, but that's where I am now. We're in, I, I gotta say we're still in a good place, my, me and my family. We're, you know, like everybody dealing with the quarantine and our own issues, my medical issues aren't, haven't dominated our world yet. So I'm lucky, I'm gonna end it there. Thanks for uh, putting up with me and my, my ball and crap. But hopefully I can talk to you again and still be positive. Bye now.